Psychology began as a combination of philosophy and experimental physiology. It used the methodology of experimental physiology to answer the questions of philosophy. One of the earliest questions of philosophy was, what is real? For many years, people believed in spirits, witches, trolls, goblins, and monsters. The world was thought of as a frightening place where one had to please the fates, scare off the evil spirits, and beware of dragons, witches, and magic potions. You couldn't venture into the forest. It was a magical place, but dangerous. You might find a house made of gingerbread, but you're likely to be eaten by an evil witch. Also, watch out for poison apples, evil spells, and singing dwarfs. A more modern emphasis on mentalism is the belief in handwriting analysis, psychic powers, tarot cards, and crystal balls. In contrast to the mentalism of mind reading and telekinesis, materialism insists on fact gathering, physical reality, and the here and now. Materialism is akin to naturalism, be natural or non artificial, and sensualism, the emphasis on the senses. Essentially, all that exists is matter. There's nothing beyond it. It is the final reality. When you're dead, you're dead. 2,500 years ago, Confucius took a middle road. He did not emphasize the supernatural, but sought to bring China back to basics. His practical approach to life impacted Eastern culture for many generations, and can be seen in many modern existential approaches to psychology. His emphasis on tradition is also supported by cognitive psychology. People like structure. We like routines, consistency, and predictability. Our annual holidays and celebrations bring us comfort and a connectedness to our families and past. Contrary to many depictions, Confucius was a large, strong man. Married at 19, he fathered a son and two daughters. But what we know of Confucius is not from his family, but from the writings of his followers. These writings, the Adelics, were banned as early as 213 B.C., but it survived to adorn countless posters, calendars, and, yes, fortune cookies. The sayings include, To be wronged is nothing unless you continue to remember it. It is only the wisest and the stupidest who cannot change. Our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. But the philosophy of Confucius is not limited to fortune cookies. Confucius is the Latin version of Kung Futsu, Master and Kung. His real name is Cheong Kung, but he's also known as Kung Futsu, or simply Kung. Born in the province of Lu, what is now Shandong, China, he was poor, but a descendant of a noble family that had been deposed. At a time when China was plagued with political corruption, Confucius emphasized the importance of honor and virtue. He wanted China to go back to the good old days. Not the good old days of 20 or 30 years earlier. Confucius wanted to go back to the times of Emperor Yao, 2300 BC. Confucius was a traditionalist. He didn't see himself as creating new things, just being faithful to the old. The challenge, he said, is how to take the old and make it your own. At age 22, Confucius began a private school, a sort of finishing school for young executives. The curricula is centered on six arts, arithmetic or mathematics, music, calligraphy, for writing Chinese characters and for its own artistic beauty, chariot handling, driver's ed, ritual, protocol and ceremony, and archery, an early version of the Minutemen, or the NRA. Like Pythagoreanism, Confucianism involves the whole person. It is not a religion, but a political and philosophical approach to every part of life. Confucius' focus was not on the supernatural. He emphasized ethics and morality, and family values such as duty, kindness, and faithfulness. To a corrupt, feudal China, Confucius brought a message of honor. His five virtues, kindness, decorum, wisdom, faithfulness, and honesty, were in direct opposition to the intrigue and decadence of his time. About the same time as Confucius, Pythagoras was influencing thought on the other side of the world. He was born on Samos Island, off the coast of Turkey, but there is little agreement on the other details of his life. His followers thought him divine, and tended to describe his life with a mix of reality and mythology. Like Confucius, it's difficult to separate Pythagoras' contribution from that of his followers. It is best to think of him as a founder of a movement. When Pythagoras settled in southern Italy, he established a community devoted to his beliefs. Many of the discoveries attributed to Pythagoras, including the Pythagorean theorem, were the work of his followers. Pythagoreanism believes in the harmony of the universe. 
the ultimate principle of proportion, and the orderliness of thought. According to this view, the best way to understand the mysteries of life is through obedience, self-examination, and simplicity of food and dress. The Pythagoreans believe that planets, including Earth, were not flat, but were spheres rotating around a common fire. They also believed in the transmigration of souls, so it was not unusual that Pythagoras said he could remember all of his previous lives, including having been a warrior in the Trojan War. Believing that the ultimate explanation of everything could be found in numbers, the Pythagoreans viewed mathematics as a part of a religious, philosophical, and political approach to life. They also believed in the liberating power of abstinence, vegetarianism, and the equality of the sexes. They maintained a very structured life of music, exercise, study, and common meals. Sayings attributed to Pythagoras include, Wisdom thoroughly learned will never be forgotten. Anger begins in folly and ends in repentance. Choose always the way that seems the best. However rough it may be, custom will soon render it easy and agreeable. Reason is immortal, all else mortal.